Hi, and welcome to this third video about creating your own custom map for Stronghold Crusader 2 with the Stronghold Crusader 2 map editor. So in the previous two tutorials we went over some of the basics of the map editor and in this video tutorial we're going to talk about creating our own custom scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own custom map and we're going to create a small map, nothing too big. We're not going to fully design an entire map. And let's start off by creating a keep. There we go. Let's uh, uh, move it a around a little bit. Um, oh, by the way, I think I don't think I've told this yet. Yet, um, if you hold down Control and you use your uh, mouse wheel, you can actually rotate your buildings around. Some buildings can be rotated uh, with 90 degrees, and others a little bit more precise with 5 degrees. I think. Um, anyway. Uh, what I want to do is create three events for this map and the first event that I want to take place is that uh, Because we start on day one and as soon as we reach day two because we survived that super long period of time uh, I want to get some money a lot of money and we're gonna do that by going to the edit scenario button and then first off making sure that we have the map type selected to mission and then we're going to go to the events tab. So what do we do here? Well, obviously we need to create a new event and we can do that by either creating a standard type event or an objective type event. Now, the standard type that is happening during the game without, without a lot of feedback on the screen. So normally, for instance, when you're playing your campaign, and you have on the top left you have these options or these objectives like if your lord dies then why well, you lose the game or when the enemy lord dies you win the game those are the objective types we however are going to use the standard types because we're not going to be dealing with a lot of enemies in our tutorial today so let's talk about how do we set up that first event so if we reach day one of the game I want something to happen. First off, we have these timing options here, which are really convenient. We can say on, which means that if we reach a certain day, in our case, whoops, closed it by accident, if we have uh, reached day one, then I want something to happen. And we can add some conditions to this. For instance, uh, we need to have at least a thousand gold or a certain building has to exist or there should be no lions on the map or there should be no enemy troops in in the vicinity we could add those but that is not per se necessary for an event to occur actions on the other hand they are mandatory because when an event fires it actually needs to do something otherwise what's the purpose of an event right so as you can see we already have the gift treasure goods which is exactly what we want now there are a lot of other ones as well just play around with them what they do start invasion is very popular I imagine because it spawns enemies and they automatically start attacking your base that's the AI taking that care of uh, taking care of that for you so uh, that's w one really cool event anyway once you selected the given action then you need to add it if you don't do that it's not actually well being used in the event so make sure you press that button and we have the give treasure goods and as you can see we have all these options for uh, a given action and in this case the give treasure goods is only one option which means how much gold are you gonna get in this case on day one and we're gonna say we're gonna get a massive load of money you know what let's make a over 9000 reference there we go and I want to make sure that I'm on day one we can use all the other ones later on but for now we'll just say on day one we're gonna give ourselves treasure goods in our case 9001 and if we press OK you can see that we have now a new event and it's gonna say hey on day one something is gonna happen we don't have an objective, we don't have any triggers either, but we do have an action. So these two can be empty. I think day can be empty as well, if you've set it to always. 
And anyway, uh, action give treasure goods. Now, if you have more than one action for an event, which is certainly possible, you can add very many uh, actions to this as well, but it will only list the first action on this tab here. So just keep that in mind. If you want to have a nice overview of all the actions, you might want to create just a new event because it's very easy to edit all this stuff. Okay, so that's very good for day one, but what happens next? I want to do something cool. Um, I want, I just saw something called the lion's den. I'm not sure, where, where did I see that? Outpost, there we go. Lion's den, let's create that lion's den because I want to create an objective where the soldiers of the map have to destroy the lion's den out there. So let's place it over there. Um, hmm, let's also make sure that they can't escape. I don't want them to walk all over the map, so uh, let's let's do that. Let's see, uh, do -do -do -do, food buildings, towns, town buildings. Nope, that's not what I want either. Just walls. Oh, there we go. Different tab. Um, yeah, let's build this massive, whoops, uh, wall around them. There we go. Sure, why not? And then let's build one there as well. And one last one over there. And let's build a gate in between them. Come on, whoops. There we go. There we go as well. And let's build that stone. Let's finish that stone wall. There we go. Let's see if we close the entire wall section. Yes. So those lines can't escape. That's really what I wanted to have. Let's put some stairs in there as well. There we go. So our, if we would have any enemy archers, they could walk on top of this wall. But these lines are pretty much stuck in there. At least I hope they can't go through the gate. I'm just assuming that that is not possible. But I actually have no idea if that is happening. So we'll just have to figure that out once we start playing with the map. Anyway, our second objective or our second event that we want to occur which could occur before the first event actually occurred um, is killing all those lions so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some units for player one and notice we also have this auto detect option so that means that if we place some troop in this faction area this red area it's auto detecting which player it belongs to but if you wanna be more specific just say you know what these guys belong to player one and we're gonna have archers yeah a lot of them Woo! all over the place top and well the problem we currently have is well we have these lions and we want to give the player a reward in uh, just in case uh, we've removed all these lions but we want to start checking that event only after a couple of days so that we know there are at least a couple of lions out there so we're gonna go back to edit scenario we're gonna go to events create a new event and then we're gonna say on and after day number two whoops I removed it again on and after day two I want something to happen if we have no more lions which is a condition then I want something to happen and in our case I want to let's see what's really cool a game event sure game event that looks cool enough add action so one more time on and after day two and then we have this condition which is no lions left then we have a game event which fires now what kind of game events do we have we have the event type we have marriage reinforcements fire, plague, all kinds of cool stuff that you can mess up, uh, mess the player with or bug the player with. And I think marriage is, well, a very simple thing. And that should happen only once, and it should happen for player one, or estate one in our case, and not for the enemy for in our case. So let's press OK. Now let's create one last event, and that is creating some sort of invasion and I'm assuming that that is going to be a very popular event uh, enemy units spawning and just they start to attack you I mean that's what's happening in the campaign 
all the time so why not do it in the editor ourselves so we're going to create a new event <clears throat> and we're going to say um, always you know sure why not and let's see um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. if the player has troops so as long as we have uh, players this condition is active and what I want to do is I want to start an invasion there we go uh, let's ch uh, change that always to on and let's set that to day two just to be sure now this invasion let's first of give it a name and um, we're gonna say the rat attack you know what the wolf attacks we have the wolf in this game I'm not sure we'll just have to figure that out the wolf we have we have the wolf top I'm gonna set Lord to wolf and the wolf is gonna attack us with two horse archers now the interesting stuff begins first off we need to say who is the invader and in this case it's going to be player two but where is our player two going to spawn that's where the entry point and target point come in action the entry point is where our player spawns and the target point is the initial point that the enemy is going to walk towards you before it starts to attack us so we need to give up some sort of entry points so how do we do that first off press ok so that we have our event um, let's close this and then we have the markers tab here let's select that and you know what as you can see we currently have the blue pin selected and number one selected and what we have to do is we say add marker and now I'm gonna place that guy inside uh, the desert somewhere and what I want to do next is I want to select number two here and click on add marker as well and I'm gonna place that right next to the castle so what's gonna happen at day two we should change perhaps to day three and these enemies are going to spawn here and they're going to uh, move towards this point and then they'll continue the invasion and they'll just try to kill you but at least they're going to go from this point to that point that's their main target so if we go back to the scenario editor and we go to events then we have this uh, this third event here in the list and let's change this to day three because on day two we have other stuff as well let's change this to day three top and now we can select which entry point they should start at now entry point one is already correct because that's the guy over here that's where they spawn but the target point should be set to number two there we go now we can set how many times this should be repeated now for instance uh, if you want to repeat this uh, invasion ten times with all these units then go ahead and set this to ten and we could also say between every new rep repetition how many days should be in between them the interval uh, we could set this to one as well so for 10 days in a row uh, two archers are being spawned here and they'll move to target point number two okay now I'm not sure if I forgot something because this is a lot of playing a lot of testing in your map as well so uh, once in a while don't forget to save which I pretty much forgot to do in uh, the last 15 minutes but anyway this is how it works so far and now let's just see if it works so far and if we need to change things afterwards so let's just save our game custom scenario tutorial that's what I'm gonna save it as yes and I wanna export it and as you can see there are no errors whatsoever so I'm just gonna press OK close the editor and start the game let's go to single player we're gonna to go to community maps and then we have the custom scenario tutorial which we are going to load okay so we're in the game and let's see what's going on we have the lion's den which is over there we have our, our archers which just stand there doing nothing because we need to uh, we'll place the stockpile first and let's do that I'm not sure if that is important but what is important is that we're currently we start at day one but as soon as day two starts we should get some money 
So let's see if that happens. <coughs> also, after day two, if there are no lines left after day two, and it keeps on checking that, we're also going to get this event that's going to happen. I believe we selected marriage. marriage. And what else did we say? That after day three, I think, um, an invasion is going to take place and the enemy is going to spawn here and it's going to move over here and in the meantime it's going to attack us. So um, I'll skip parts of the video because it, it takes a while before enemies actually, before the day is actually, uh, well, we pass. So uh, yeah, let's just wait and see what happens. Hey, look at that. Day 2 has started and we received our money 9,000 over 9,000 to be exact now as you notice because we have a standard mission type we didn't get any kind of warning or notice about hey you did something really cool now for some standard type missions you can get the scribe to say something but if you don't uh, specify that the scribe is not gonna say anything and you'll just well you can just be glad that you have this money now let's go pick up these uh, archers and let's move them out of those walls, like they're saying. And let them fire away. The looks of it, quite a lot of lions. Looks like they're all spawning in one another. Like, okay. And it. Look at that. A marriage. All lions were killed, which means this event triggered. Of course, the lions keep spawning, but at that very point, there were no lions in the map, so the marriage event started playing, which is awesome. Let's move our archers back because uh, we're gonna get some uh, enemies real soon. And there we go. They've spawned because, well, we still have troops. That was one of the conditions. They spawned at point number one, and now they're going to move to point number two. And after that, they're just going to keep on attacking. But since they're dead, uh, yeah, that's not going to last really long. Now, we could even wait one extra day, and then they would be spawning again. Because we said, you know, this should be happening for at least ten more times, and every other day... A new event should be happening which spawns the which starts the invasion but um yeah I could just wait and see if that happens I could speed up the video a little bit a new day has approached and the enemies are spawning again because we said it would do so it would iterate and here they are again well their attempt is quite futile as you can see we're a little overpowered but that doesn't matter anyway this pretty much covers this tutorial on creating your own custom events and using the uh, scenario editor for creating your own mission types. Uh, we haven't covered the um, the other uh, scenario events, the um, what were they called again? Not sure. Anyway, for instance, if you want uh, some sort of objective to appear in your left corner of the screen, you need to use the other one, the non-standard types, the objective type. That's what they're called, and then you can get if your lord dies you lose and you have this lovely icon in there I don't think I'm gonna do an extra video tutorial on that because it's pretty much the exact same thing as with uh, the standard scenarios only with an extra icon on the top left corner so I'm just gonna see how this uh, turns out and how the community likes it and well if there are any more questions coming along then it'll turn into a new video tutorial hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see some cool maps uh, appearing especially when the workshop is available for Stronghold Crusader 2 and I guess I'll see you around. Bye!